How does it possibly make sense to buy a home in a seller's market? How, why would you do that, right? The prices are going up. The market is crazy. Why would I buy? Everyone knows you buy low and sell high. Why would I buy high? Well, the answer is actually pretty logical. If you're in the business or you're around the business, it's punching you in the face every day. But if you're not, and you're living your life at your job with your family and your obligations and things, I get it. I get it that this doesn't sound logical, but I want to slow down and walk people through why many people in a seller's market who want to buy are making truly terrible decisions. Decisions that will damage their, their financial future for potentially the rest of their lives. And I'm not trying to be dramatic and overdo this. I'm telling you, these mistakes sound logical, but are terrible. And again, the answer to the question is fairly logical if you'll follow me, but the difference is perspective. The difference is uh, insight and data and uh, frequency of examples. So here we go. Follow my logic here, okay? Let's assume that this is, you know, whatever, the year 1900, and this is the year 3000, whatever, right? So you got old and new. And generally speaking, over time, residential real estate values have, well, factual statement, over time, residential real estate values have gone up. Now there's questions of inflation and borrowing and all this stuff, but home values have gone up. They are not guaranteed to go up in a short-term period. They're not guaranteed to go up in any way, but historically speaking, over the long haul, they always go up. Doesn't mean they go up as much as people want or any certain amount, but they always go up over the long haul. So, by that logic alone, if you wait more often than not, the price of the home is going up, period, right? Now, there's a lot more detail. We're going to get into it here in a second. But just if that alone was our basis for making the decision of why would I buy in a seller's market, the answer is because buying later will cost more, right? Now, here's the logic of people that disagree with me. And again, I'm very clearly stating that I am confident they are wrong, but here's what they think. They think, well, real estate goes in cycles. Uh, I hear a lot about bubbles. And so I'm going to time the market perfectly. It's at the, th their theory is that things in a seller's market are at or near the top and they will eventually come back down. And their goal by default, what they're saying is I will buy when things come back down. And then I will ride the next wave up and I'll be fine. Now, very, very few people time markets well. I mean, no one times them perfectly for the long haul, but very few people consistently time residential real estate markets really, really well. Now, again, I'm here in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. So historically, values have just gone up and up and up and up and up. Most people point to two times where they believe that home values in Dallas-Fort Worth and most of Texas went down. In the late 80s, we had the savings and loan bust, like local lending institutions called savings and loans. Um, they had a massive problem. We're not going to get into it on this video. Massive problem. Things went really bad. Interest rates went through the roof for somewhat related causes and some unrelated causes. Now, here's the situation. In the late 80s, we did see some residential real estate values come down for a little while and quickly recover. The other time people point to is the 2008-9 recession. Um, I only put that in quotes because it affects different people in different segments of the market very differently. Some people did really, really well during that time. Specific to the Dallas-Fort Worth area where I am, we did not see home values drop. Uh, across the board. We saw some pockets lose a little value for a little bit of time. But historically speaking, um, if you look at the macro data, market-wide data from 2008 and nine, the Dallas-Fort Worth area and much of Texas basically went flat. The market just hit pause. The reason I go into all that detail is when the market was crazy hot in 04, 05, 06, 07, and people were saying, you know what? I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait. The market's too hot. The seller's market is crazy. I don't want to pay for all this. I'm going to wait. Well, they're still waiting. Prices have not come down yet. The difference is they're up more than 100%. 
in almost every single area in DFW. So when you think about that, even if prices came down 50% today in one day, which they're barring something truly insane, that's not going to happen. But even if they did, that buyer is still up 50% compounding from when they said they were going to wait. It just doesn't make sense logically, financially. The other factor to think about is if you're going to wait to buy, you're probably going to rent. And rental rates in a seller's market are at near all-time highs almost every time. Right now, they're at absolute all-time highs. Um, interest rates are another factor, right? So if prices are rising, but rates are still very low, there's some attractive reason to get into a home then. If prices are rising and rates are high, it's less attractive. But what if those rates are going up still and the value of the home is going up still, right? So all of this comes back to my original point that over the long haul, home values have historically always gone up. There's no guarantee of that, certainly not in a one, two, three year period, but historically they've always gone up. In markets like I'm in, in Texas, especially in Dallas, Fort Worth, they have rarely ever gone down. And when they did, they didn't stay down long. So trying to time that drop is very difficult. Plus between now and when the drop happens, you might have enough increase that the drop doesn't serve you well at all. Um, interest rates, housing availability, the cost of renting, the cost of debt, the cost of insurance, all of these things, the cost of building materials, the availability and cost of labor at this moment are all working against you if you're waiting to buy a house. Now, how does this, how is this relevant to sellers? Let me just give a quick nod to sellers in this conversation. If you're a seller, you want optimistic buyers. You want buyers competing for your home. If you find yourself in a situation where buyers are losing confidence because of market conditions, because they're all deciding to wait, because they're all priced out of the market, then your opportunity as a seller is going away, is diluting, is drifting away from you. So all of this to say, why buy in a seller's market? Because tomorrow may be a more extreme seller's market. Because the house you want to buy will probably cost more tomorrow than today. The cost of the two by four and the shingle to fix it and build it tomorrow might be more. The cost to borrow money tomorrow might be more. As of today, all of those things are true. Rates are probably rising. Cost of material and labor is definitely rising. The cost of the home itself is absolutely rising. Inventory is not getting any better. So if you're listening to this close to when it was published, waiting is very expensive. Final thought, if you, your family, and your finances are not ready, don't let any of that math pressure you into making a poor decision for your real estate needs. If you're in the area or moving to the area and we can help you out, grab my info below, click a link. We'd love to connect with you and help you out. I'll talk to you on the next one.